Today I'm looking at a new gimbal from Fiutech, the Scorp 2. In a previous video, I reviewed the Scorp Mini, and I like that gimbal quite a bit. But as its name indicates, it's really designed for smaller payloads. Although it worked very well with phones, and then of course small mirrorless cameras. And so now looking at the Scorp 2, I'm interested in what kind of payloads it can handle. Because really that's all I care about is what I can put on the gimbal. Today, smartphone stabilization has gotten so good that you don't really need a gimbal that much if you're using the phone only. But if I'm loading it up with a Beast Cage or a Beast Grip Pro and lenses and that kind of thing, then I want a gimbal that will carry that load. So again, for me, that's all I really care about beyond some of the special features that these gimbals offer. All right, so let's see what comes with this gimbal. You've got the gimbal itself, a little mini tripod, looks like a couple camera plates. And so this gimbal looks very similar to the Scorp Mini. I like this scoop kind of style gimbal. But again, this one is for heavier payloads. And so I've already set this up and I've got it balanced. I'm using a B-Script Pro and an iPhone 15 Pro Max and I'm using a Sandmark case. It's a pretty basic setup, but on these larger gimbals, I like to use a cage or a rig of some kind just to give the phone a little more weight because this particular gimbal holds five and a half pounds approximately, 2.5 kilograms. And so a phone on there is almost a little bit too light if you're just using a small little phone tripod mount. And so putting the B-Script on there really makes it easier to use, but then it also balances easier. And right now the gimbal is off and you can see how nicely that is balanced. I'm actually pretty surprised. That balanced really well and it was really easy to balance. Let me turn it on. And there it goes. It lifts it right up, of course, because it was already pre-balanced. And this thing moves around no problem whatsoever. This gimbal might be my new favorite of what I call hybrid gimbals. The one I've used for the last several years that I still recommend and like quite a bit is the Zhiyun Crane M3, and I've got it right here. And you can see the difference in size. Just a different style, too. This one has this rear handle that I like quite a bit because you can go into low mode real easily and it also just offsets things when you're shooting. You can shoot with two hands and it makes it a little bit less tiring. But this gimbal is still great. It's more of a traditional straightforward gimbal. This one is a little more of a unique design, but this one now holds a little more weight than that one and it popped this rig up super easily. And so I'll let you know by the end of this video, this is my new favorite hybrid gimbal. And while I'm here, just for comparison's sake, I mentioned the Scorp Mini at the beginning, and this is the Scorp Mini. Reviewed this previously, and as you can tell, it's very similar to this one. It's just designed for much smaller cameras or smartphone only. But again, it's very similar in design and functionality, but the payload on this is much lighter. But this is still a really nice gimbal for smaller setups. But if you have a bigger setup, a Pro Max type phone, and you wanted to use a cage or any kind of additional accessories like lenses, etc., then these hybrid gimbals are really the way to go. So the gimbal works very well. I am impressed with its ease of use and of course it's very stable. And so now what I really wanna highlight are some of my favorite features. Biotech has a really nice app that goes with this gimbal. However, if you're using your phone as your camera, it doesn't really make sense to use it to control the gimbal, obviously because you're shooting with the phone. Although you could do setup that way, but the app UI doesn't turn vertical, so you'd have to actually turn your phone to make it work. But the good news is pretty much everything I can see actually works on the menu control of the handle as well. So you can pick whether you want it to be 
pan follow or FPV mode or lock mode, etc. Then you can do, again, every setting that's in the app. You can check the motors. You can do an auto tune of the motors. You got these different scenarios, whether you're shooting a time lapse or a panorama, that kind of thing. And if you had a camera connected, like a traditional camera, you could control the different camera settings here as well. But the main things that I use and that most people use are switching how the gimbal reacts when you're moving around. You also have a joystick, which is nice and responsive. You can also set the speed for this type of movement. I just got it on medium, but it's really responsive and easy to move the camera around. And then to get back to default, you grab the trigger, squeeze it twice and it goes back. But the main point is you can do pretty much everything you need to do right here in this particular menu at your fingertips. You don't have to use the app. Another interesting feature is this wheel. You can spin this wheel and it'll tilt like that. Or if you click this button, it goes to the next one and you can then pan. You can click it again and now you're doing the roll axis. And so it's nice just to have manual control over that depending on what you're shooting. And then it's also nice that you can control it right here with hardware based buttons because you can do the same thing in the app as well. But again, this way you don't have to use the app. And then one thing this gimbal has, it's built into, it has an AI that is hardware based and is a tracker. I like that it's hardware based because that way with any type of camera, including any app or any phone, then you can film yourself. And so for solo YouTubers or anytime you're doing something by yourself, that's a really nice feature to have. Pretty cool thing they've added as well is you can pull down here on the back handle and you've got two little legs and these things are hard to pull down, which is good. That means they're nice and sturdy, but it's two little mini legs there. And that way, if you weren't using the tripod, you could set this down and you could just rest it. That way, not only could you do a shot like that, you could set up and maybe do a time lapse or use the AI tracker or whatever. But if you're setting up the gimbal then too, you could set it on the hood of your car or a table or whatever. And that way, if you didn't have the tripod with you, you would have a way to easily work on the gimbal because that's always been a pain if you don't have a tripod or someone else to help when you're balancing the gimbal. But now they have that built in. So I think that's a nice little addition. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with the Scorp 2. And with its 5.5 or so pound payload, you can really carry pretty much any type of setup with a phone. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say right now, at the time of this video, the Scorp 2 is my new favorite hybrid gimbal. Now this one is a little bit more expensive, but I really think it's worth it if you're rigging your phone up with cages and lenses and stuff like that that I showed in this video. So if you're interested in picking one up, I've got a link in the description. Thanks for watching, this is Blake Calhoun. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.